Hello there, I am Vieno and this is my fourth video tutorial on D3. Uh, in this video we'll take a look at how to actually bind data to uh, our visualization or in other words actually visualize data uh, on our web page using D3. Uh, so in the previous vid video we take we took a look at uh, SVG with it, which is an image format for displaying uh, graphical elements on our web page uh, and in this video we'll use SVG to to visualize a basic data set so first of all we'll just erase this uh, we'll keep our canvas element since we we need a canvas to draw our our uh, our visualization right so uh, usually when you visualize data you have a large data set uh, in a file somewhere, uh, an SCV file or a JSON file, there are different file formats for storing uh, data. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll just create a our own data here. So we'll create a new variable called data array, which is will be an array. And if you don't know what an what an uh, array is. Uh, it's just a simple collection of data. You could think of this as, since we have three elements in our in our data array here, this is base. This is kind of like three different variables, but stored in one one variable. Uh, yeah. So let's say we want to visualize this data. We could do this in a number of ways. We could display a circle for each datum we could uh, yeah we could do it in a vast variety of, of ways but in this case let's say we wanted to make a simple bar chart so each uh, data point here would be uh, represented by a bar let's begin by creating a uh, the bars variable and we start out from the uh, the canvas uh, variable which are which is defined here now this is where some strange things uh, begin to happen and this will be very confusing to you um, I think most people uh, are utterly confused by this there are several steps here which may seem kind of weird in the beginning but after a while you'll get the hang of it let me try to explain the best I can and then you can just like sit in a like your favorite chair and just contemplate about this. Uh, the first step is to select all. Uh, this is a new, a new method we use. Um, select all is similar to the select method which we looked at previous but it selects all elements that we specify uh, like yeah in, in here between the brackets and the quotes. So since we want to create bars, bars are basically rectangles, right? So uh, we're selecting all rectangles. Uh, but this is weird, right? Because, because we don't have any actual rectangles on, on our page. So what this met method does in this context is returning an empty array or an empty selection. Uh, but it's it's still useful because we can use that empty selection to bind uh, we can connect it to our data and that is done using the data method and within brackets we specify where our data is coming from and in this case we have a variable set up here containing our data so we just specify that our data comes from the data array variable uh, so so far we've bound our data to an empty selection. The next step is the enter method. Um, this method returns placeholders for each data element uh, for which there are no corresponding elements, I mean doom elements uh, on the page. So yeah, that's that's weird, but let's say we we actually had two 
two rectangles already on the page, then this data method here would bi bind them to, like we're selecting all the rectangles. So let's say there are two rectangles. And the data method binds our data right here to those rectangles. But the enter method contains placeholders for each data point or each data element for which there are no corresponding uh, doom elements, I mean, and that is rectangles on our page. But since in this case we don't have any rectang rectangles at all, we our enter method contains placeholders for each and every data element. So we returned with three placeholders uh, for each of these values right here. Uh, so that's confusing, I know, but let's continue anyways. Uh, so, so now that we have our enter selection, this returns an, a new selection for, that we can do stuff with. So we have a selection uh, containing three placeholders. Now, for each, I'm just going to indent this, this is how I like to do it. For each of these uh, placeholders, we'll append a rectangle, right? Because we want to append a rectangle for each data element, or a bar for each data element. Okay, so append rectangle, and we want to give it some some attributes. Uh, so let's begin by specifying the width, the width, and previously we just hard um, hard coded this, and we just typed out a value like this. But in this case, we want the width, since the width will be the value, the property that that displays the uh, um, the, da the data that we have. We want the width to be a function of the data. So instead of just typing out a value right here, like this, in a value, we'll use a function. And if you, if you have no idea what a function means, I'm sorry, but I don't think I have time to explain in detail what it means right now. You, you can Google it, uh, how functions work in JavaScript. Uh, but es essentially it takes an input, does something to it, and returns a value of some sort. Uh, so let's return um, yeah right, uh, when we have this data we can uh, give the function a, an argument D, whatever, you can call this whatever you like, but the standard is D. So D stands for each data element that we have in our placeholder selection, our enter selection. So we can return um, D simply here. So we'll return for each data element that is um, within our enter selection the width of our rectangle here that we append will be a function of the data. So the first um, the first uh, bar will be 20 pixels wide, the second one 40 pixels wide, and the third one 50 pixels wide. Uh, and this is similar to a loop, if you've dealt with loops before. It goes through all the data elements, and for each data element it returns the value of that data and and assigns the width of the rectangle uh, corresponding to, to that data. So let's also give it a height. Let's say each um, no, we can just say that each uh, rectangle rectangle will have a height of 50 pixels. And let's uh, let's take a look at how this looks. Um, so we head over head over to our browser and hit refresh. We, we just get this blob. 
and that is because uh, we need to separate since SVG starts drawing from drawing from the top left uh, each rectangle is placed upon I mean in the same place so the biggest rectangle covers the rest of them uh, so we need to give them uh, additional properties let's give them uh, the y uh, property with just a vertical coordinate uh, let that be a function of the index and this is um, another thing you just have to get used to since we have this uh, placeholder selection uh, the functions the first argument contains the data 20 40 50 the second one contains the number the index of each data so this is the first one the second one and the third one uh, so let's uh, uh, since I stands for index we can return I times uh, let's say 100 and let's save this and refresh and we see that the distance between each rectangle uh, the, the vertical distance is 100 pixels well you don't see that but it is <laughs> so this is 50 pixels uh, tall since we that's what we specified here in the height and after since the, the distance is uh, 100 pixels there's a 50 pixel gap between each uh, rectangle uh, but it doesn't look very good right uh, the, they're really tiny you, and you can hardly see the difference between them so let's um, here in the width property we can uh, return D times let's say 10 so it will return this value here for each data element times 10 so 20 will be 200 and so on let's save oh no save and refresh and we get a I mean we're getting somewhere this is yeah it's a very basic ugly looking bar chart but at least we have a bar chart and the bar chart is um, powered by our data element here but so yeah in the future this data variable will be replaced by a larger data set probably in an external file somewhere uh, yeah that's that's the um, that's a that's an introduction to displaying data using d3 and I know it's very complicated but yeah you it just takes a lot of practice and thinking. So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.